Hi, my name is Andrew McLaren, and I wanted to help you make AI proof assignments or assessments using three easy tricks because a lot of people think AI is somehow able to do all these things that it can't quite do. Like it can't really cite real sources. It doesn't have access to everything on the internet, only the stuff that's public and available for free. So if there's a closed database, like Gale or Oslis, it won't have access to that. So you can use things from that. And then you can also give certain t types of tasks with clear defined solutions. And it really struggles with those. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about these in just a second so you can see examples. So if you're requiring sources with hyperlinks, this is something it can't really do. I like hyperlinks because I like to just click on it so I can quickly confirm that the linked page is actually a real page. Um, ChatGPT says it can do this, and a lot of people believe that it can make sources. It can't. There may be some AI in the future that will be able to do this, but currently everything that's really based on ChatGPT, like Bing and all that other stuff, cannot do this. And I haven't seen one yet that can. So just know that as of um, 2023, uh, like late August, that's not really a concern. Um, but I just wanted to have you see what it does actually say around um, its ability to cite things. So it even says that it can cite sources. Like it can make something that's in MLA format um, just fine. So if you give it information about a book, it can turn that into MLA format so it can help with citations. But then it seems to think that it can provide relevant sources of information. Um, but then I have said, like, I've seen this make, make it up before. Um, and it doesn't actually have the ability to pull things from the internet. It's using previous pages, so not live connections to the internet. And it used that to find patterns and it's using those patterns to write things. So it's not really accessing pages from the internet so much as it's accessing its trained uh, data sets that it, it believes to be true when it, in, it interprets so many different pieces of information. It's like, this is what's really going on. So when it, tries to cite what it thinks is really going on, it like makes something up. So um, just be careful with sources. If you're trying to get something, I made a video about how offensive jokes contribute to hate speech. And I used ChatGBT to kind of make a lesson around this. And I asked it for a ton of sources. Um, and it was really interesting asking it to give um, links to these things and like the links just did not work like these articles just did not exist and it kept on giving me all these things that um, just didn't work <laughs> and they looked like they were like correct links but then they would take you to links for pages that were just completely wrong <laughs> like it wasn't even what it was saying it was so just be careful about um, citations and if you ask it to hyperlink you'll be able to quickly check this is not actually an article that exists. So um, have it give things that are actual citations to actual pages. Um, and you can see other people have observed this. They can't really make a valid reference. It can um, provide sometimes things that are actual articles or books or whatever, but it's inconsistent and it may not actually be real. So. Yeah, that's a pretty good way of catching this. So requiring a closed data set makes it so the AI can't get inside that and you need like some sort of password, which it does not have access to so that it won't be able to refer to any of that data. So that in of itself is a really useful thing. So there's Gale, which um, if you just go to gale.com, they have options for um, educators. So if you're like a middle school teacher and you wanna get access to one of these databases, you really should be able to get access to these things through your school. So talk to your librarian about how to do that. Um, oftentimes when I've tried to get access to them, they've asked for a library access because um, I'm currently not in a school teaching. So I've only got the access to Gale via these um, access, like the library access. So that is something to keep in mind that you can't really get into here unless you have your info. But if you do, then it's fairly easy. So I just entered in that information and now I have access to Gale and context through the access um, with my uh, library card. 
And so that's one useful way to make sure like AI can't re reference anything like this article. Uh, only you can see this because you have access to Gale. And so it's a credible source. You know it's credible because it's from a good database. And it's also something that it's not going to be able to reference unless um, these things change and suddenly get access to Gale. But I don't see that happening because that costs money. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's probably not going to be something that they're going to do. They're just going to go for the free things on the internet. So AI currently is not really good at complex tasks that have a clear solution. So AI can do like multiple choice questions very, very well. It's able to get like the best fit or the best option from that pretty nicely. And short answer, like it's good at recognizing vocab words and definitions for that stuff. So it can do okay with those style of questions. Um, and persuasive essays is actually where it really shines, where there's not really a clear solution where you're trying to argue for one side it is really good at doing persuasive arguments that sound uh, pretty persuasive, though it may be using vocab words that your students don't know. So there may be some stuff where you're like, I don't think students are going to have that like vocab use or like that doesn't sound like a middle schooler's voice in the writing, but that's also prone to bias. So we want to be careful about that. So there's this idea that AI is good at certain things like taking tests where it's not really, it's just the test formats that we're using are particularly good for it. So there's other things that I've noticed. So um, when I've been trying to do some advanced tutoring, I've noticed that it can't really do pH calculations or kinematic problems with three or more steps. So if there's multiple concepts being combined and used together, it'll oftentimes mess up some of the calculations or refer to some information incorrectly from one part and another part. So it's not really like able to think on the same level that you you might expect even like a freshman in college to be able to do. Um, I've seen this consistently, it not be able to do tasks designed this way. Um, so if you have multiple steps, but there is one solution that is not just like an argument, but has a clear path to it, then that is the type of task that you want uh, to give your students. So it's like AI proof. Um, there's also, if you think about that, you can break this down into a couple different categories. I've seen like these multiple step calculations be pretty important. So that's kind of like part A here. Um, so you can change a lot of your traditional tests to be kind of like this, but if you're in a lower grade level that may be difficult um if there's some sort of errors in a visual data set or a model so if they need to draw in certain animals into an ecosystem like missing components in a food web that might be something that it struggles with so like chat gpt really struggles with visual elements and people think ai is really good at doing visual tasks like recognizing a cat from any picture and it is incredible at that. But what it's bad at is um, giving you some writing with that image and, and using thoughts with the image. And so like what I've found is that I, I gave us an assignment where students had to draw out some phase change um, using some semi-completed like, image, like a starter of the image, and then they had to like, kind of finish it up a little bit. So that is something that AI has got to really struggle with especially these language models, which are trained differently than like a visual processing model. So they've got different tasks that these AIs are doing. So it's not so good at doing these visual elements and interpreting that. So it's, and many of them don't even give you an option to input an image. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So tests can also include some sort of video of students performing a procedure. So the student has to show themselves being able to do a specific task. So this might be correctly pouring a certain amount of the solution or recording um, data correctly with like a sample paper uh, or sample with its weight paper and then just getting the weight paper's weight and then finding out the weight of the sample. So there's procedural things that you can include in a test where you can actually watch students doing that procedure and that's like near impossible for AI to do currently. Sure the deep fakes down the road they might be able to do something <laughs> where they're it looks like a student is doing a task, but they've maybe edited another student's face onto one student. So you, yeah, potentially down the future, but if you do this in class, you're gonna um, be able to monitor that a little bit easier and see when videos are being created and turned in.
Thank you for McLearning with me. Before you go, please check out the following services that I offer with my business. So if you click the link in my videos, this goes to my website. I might be changing it from Podia because I'm no longer doing the interactive videos for sale. I might put those up for free. Um, but most of my other services are linked here. So you can see that I've got like a Teachers Pay Teachers and a Wiseant. Um, the Teachers Pay Teachers has a lot of my assessments that I have for like the NGSS as well as lessons that I made when I was actually a teacher in the classroom. So I've got quite a few things like CERs and other things on there. Um, if you want to get one-on-one -on -one live support from me, either like with science or like working on um, like teaching support lessons and that kind of stuff, uh, you can sign up through Wiseant. I have a link to there where you can contact me there. Um, and we can schedule hourly appointments. Um, and I've got a few other things on here like a Facebook page um, and our social media. And if you're interested in getting professional development with me for like a team of teachers, a whole page with information on that. So yeah, feel free to check that out. Um, thank you.